Welcome to Eye on You. We are in the middle of a new path of industrial revolution. This fourth industrial revolution or industry 4.0 is the next step in applying technology. It is the digital transformation and practical applications of our current scientific knowledge. It aims to apply science to address real world issues. This approach of science is majorly used in sectors like technology, business, medicine, education, etc. to identify methods that might produce positive outcomes, answer technological difficulties or drive innovation. For instance, in the technology sector, applied science could be used to research how cybersecurity can be improved to prevent online fraud, whereas in the business sector, applied science could be used to add automation, smart technology and the Internet of Things to manufacturing equipment resulting in smart machines that can collaborate, self-diagnose problems and fix themselves. The Hong Kong Applied Science and Technology Research Institute was founded in the year 2000 and is one of the major pillars for Hong Kong innovative and technology ecosystem. It has been empowering many tech companies, startups, large enterprises and SMEs on applying technologies to solve problems from fintech to metaphors, from cybersecurity to IC. In addition, the ASRI has built a rich portfolio of inter intellectual properties and nurtured many talented researchers for various industries and sectors. In short, as the largest government-funded applied R&D institute in Hong Kong, the ASRI possessed a strong track record of commercializing innovative technological solutions. Today, we are grateful to invite Dr. Stannis Ip, the CEO of ASRI, to talk about his vision on applied science in Hong Kong and how Hong Kong's tech industry can seize the emerging opportunity in the Greater Bay Area by applying science and technologies. Hello, Dennis. Welcome to our show today. Thank Welcome you. Welcome to our show. So, um, as we know that the Hong Kong Applied Science and Technology Research Institute was founded in year 2000 and is one of the major pillars for Hong Kong innovation and technology ecosystem. So can you tell us what is the aim of the, of your, of the institute? It was set up 22 years ago by uh, then CE uh, Dong Kim Ma. And basically the mission is the word apply. So mm -hmm. Applied Science and Technology Research Institute is one of the institutes that want the technology not just on the upstream research but actually from upstream to midstream and then apply the technology so that the whole city and also impacting the globe including GBA and the Belt and Road to really get the technology rolling. Mm -hmm. Right, so the notion of applied science and technology seems very abstract to many people. Many people do not know what that is. So um, for the developments that you have created uh, and as we have created, how can it bring about better lives in our, um, for example, for our Hong Kong people? Actually, uh, it, it probably would be easier to uh, illustrate a few examples. Uh, we actually have algorithm, but when I talk about algorithm, um, a lot of people don't know what that is. Uh, for example, uh, we are having uh, sensing technologies, optics technology uh, to really look at how uh, the eyebrows work. For example, we have very interesting technology mm. uh, that when you do Zoom classes, uh, you can actually manage to look at how many students are looking at their phone. We have this working with different international schools right now and using the eyebrow uh, size and uh, basically the, the management of the different optics uh, we know that this guy actually um, did not attend class attentively. <laughs> the score is low <laughs> and actually give them warning from the teachers. Oh, wow. On the other hand, from the tech um, industry's perspective, so what initiative or strategic plans does the um, ASTRI has taken to enhance Hong Kong's competitiveness in technology-based industry through applied science? Yes, actually, the, the aim of SG is not just doing projects. Uh, I mentioned applied technology. So what we want is very specific segment. We want to not just promote SG, but promote Hong Kong in the INT ecosystem. Give you a few examples. Right? One is uh, semiconductor. Hong Kong actually has very good semiconductor research. A lot of people don't know about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, we do uh, first generation semiconductor silicon carbide. We do research on three dimension uh, semiconductor uh, research. And what we want to do is 
to pull together the universities who are doing this kind of semiconductor research. We pull together the GBA expert and actually create an ecosystem uh, in, for example, 2024, when the Microelectronics Center opened in Yunlong. Actually, there will be more people doing the research here and more companies coming here. So that's one example. So there are multi um, disciplines that uh, you have been involved in the uh, industry. So can you tell us uh, what do you think about the talent pool in Hong Kong? The, um, does S3, can S3 retain talent and uh, attract more talents in Hong Kong? I think this is the most painful question uh, when people talk about talent nowadays. And, and very honestly, there are a bunch of uh, Hong Kong core middle class talents leaving Hong Kong. Uh, in the last two years. So mm -hmm. we, we kind of look at the 35 to 45 years old range. A lot of people actually have left. And we, our job is to retain the INT ecosystem. That's why we need talent. So the way we do it is uh, different angles. Uh, one angle is uh, when we uh, talk about STEM, actually we talk about it in the middle school and even primary school level to attract more people to learn about STEM. I mean, you look at the DSE uh, result, uh, and actually a lot of people who are very good scores, uh, most of them go to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> None of them say, I want to become a technologist. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is, this is the area that we want to work on. Mm -hmm. And secondly, how do you attract uh, talents from outside Hong Kong to come to Hong Kong? So for example, a lot of uh, Southeast Asia, they have a lot of talents in Vietnam, in Indonesia, India, Pakistan. How do we attract them? So we are doing a uh, different ecosystem, not just using S3 to attract them, but the whole Hong Kong technology talent, they can come and get a work visa, and hopefully the work visa can be processed faster. Mm -hmm. Right now, I think it's still too slow uh, to improve that area. Uh, so you've mentioned about the uh, talent pool. Uh, the expansion of talent pool is, a, is something that we are some challenge that we are looking at. So besides that, what worries you the most besides expanding the talent pool, it is difficult. So because the uh, global, global competition is so fierce, uh, what can we do? Well, I think in the technology field, right now there is a split of camp. So 10 years ago, when you are working, for example, looking at a solution, you are looking for a global solution. Nowadays, you have to look at the China camp versus the US camp. I mean, cloud is a very simple example that most people understand, right? Do I go to Amazon cloud? And if I go to Amazon cloud, it will be quite difficult to work in Chinese companies in different areas. So a lot of companies now has a, for example, Amazon cloud or a US cloud. They also have a Tencent cloud or Ali cloud. So what worries me the most is the split between the technology is become less and less globalized. <laughs> it becomes having two camps. Mm. And, and having two camps mean that you are learning two different types of technologies. Mm. So under the um, national 14 five year plan, we are aiming to build Hong Kong as an international INT hub for um, um, as a very good uh, technology hub in, in, uh, for the world. So um, what S3 will do to achieve this goal? Well, I think it's very clear if you look at uh, Chairman Xi's uh, visit in July, right? Mm. The only place that is um, usually he won't go this time he went is actually Science Park. So uh, I think promoting mm. Hong Kong to be the INT ecosystem uh, and inter inter uh, innovation hub actually is not something only Hong Kong will do. It's actually mm. the, the China's initiative to help Hong Kong to become a role of going into the international side. So I think for enhancing the whole uh, innovation hub, uh, there are a few areas that we need to look at. One is how do we get the basic university research to commercialize? Because Hong Kong, actually, if you look at the QS100 uh, uh, ranking, five universities are ranked in the top 100. But uh, I think there is an improvement that can be made uh, to look at those researchers in the Hong Kong top universities to apply to help Hong Kong, help GBA, so that Hong Kong becomes the innovation hub. Secondly is actually talent, which we just mentioned. 
And then thirdly is actually how do we build an ecosystem, uh, what we call what the government policy is, what the university research are, what are the research institutes that can match, and then how do you match with what we call commercialization, how the companies use it. If these four areas can be interconnected and make it more positive, I think Hong Kong will definitely be able to become the big innovation hub uh, of the world. Mm. Mentioning about the GBA, the um, Greater Bay Area, uh, how do you envision the development of uh, applied science and technology in the Greater Bay Area and how can Astri contribute to this development? It's a very good question. Actually, Astri uh, has about 70 people in Shenzhen right now. And uh, these 70 people, actually, we will be probably doubling that soon. Uh, we are working with Fu Tang government. And Fu Tang government is actually working with us on different projects. And they are actually using also the uh, Greater Bay Area Uni University, like the SUST, to have PhD students working on our projects. And, and my belief is the Hong Kong technology side has a lot to learn from what Shenzhen has. Because when you use a technology in Hong Kong, the most you can use is uh, 7 million people using it. And that is not enough to become a unicorn. If you look at the Hong Kong 12 to 18 unicorns right now, they become unicorn not because they are having revenue in Hong Kong. They become unicorns because they are having big revenue either in mainland or in outside China on the overseas areas. So I think to really cultivate this, uh, when you look at the Hong Kong and GBA connection on technology, we need to work more closer together. And also we need to have an exchange in talent. So the S3 role is actually we are creating a bigger GBA presence so that our 500 researchers in Hong Kong and our 70 researchers in Shenzhen can interconnect to look at what are the deepest technology nowadays, what we are working on and how to enhance that. So just now you have mentioned metaverse. Um, this is the most um, popular keywords in the technology world. So um, how does the metaverse affect our, our, our reality world? And uh, what does ASPRI will do to assist the tech company to get the most out of it from, from the metaverse? Yeah, metaverse is very interesting. When, when people think about metaverse, they think about games. Uh, what SG is working on is the behind-the-scene technology of Metaverse. And, and before the Metaverse word even apply, because uh, you know Facebook changed to Meta, and, and that actually becomes a big word of Metaverse. We, we have been working on these kind of technologies in the last few years. So one example is the AR VR glass, mm -hmm. right? SG actually has, in our research, the lightest glass that we have worked on. We, we only have, uh, we can have classes that's up to 60 grams. Mm. And it's one of the lightest in the world. And, and if you have a light glass, you have longer battery, you can actually wear that glass for a few hours. Versus if you do games, one hour you're tired, mm. right? So the technology we are using, for example, we are helping the uh, people with eye vision problems to really use sensing and glasses to look at how to improve their eye vision. So that's one thing. And secondly is we also have remote maintenance with different companies in Hong Kong they have set up. So example, when I go to maintain a data center in uh, outside, I don't need the technologist or the technician to really go there. I can manage in the back headquarters office. They do an AR, VR glasses, and then you can manage that knowing exactly which electric wire to plug, etc. Right. Asri is doing very well in the techno technology development. And lastly, uh, we would like to ask your opinion on an issue that the U.S. has created an alliance called the CHIP4 that includes Japan, South Korea and Taiwan. And they are aimed at countering China's gr uh, growing inf influence at the global uh, supply chain. So uh, what is the impact of this CHIP4 on Hong Kong and in the mainland? And what should the ASRI do to mitigate any prospective risks to ensure the future development of applied science nationwide? Well, I think on a technology perspective, uh, actually there's not much impact. Yeah. The, the reason I say that is, uh, it's actually already two camps. I mean, the U.S. technologies are in the two-dimension circuit 
integrated circuit is actually very advanced. And China has been researchers, what we call the three dimensional integrated circuit. And this has been done in the last 10 years. S3 has started that 10 years ago. And um, of course, the, the whole scheme is that to beat Moore's law. Moore's, Moore's law say that in 18 months, we will double the, the speed. And you can do it in many ways. So two dimension, you really have faster circuit, faster technology. Three dimension, you don't have that fast, but your technology is to interlink different layers together. So in that, I think on the technology side, there will not be a huge impact because it's already two camps. Mm -hmm. this, this has happened five years ago. But on the manufacturing side, there's a lot of impact because what U.S. wants to do is to pull their manufacturing of semiconductors to the chip four countries rather than put it in China. So this will have an impact of the whole highly advanced manufacturing capability. I'm not worried about technology. I'm worried about if all the U.S. companies pull back on Chinese manufacturing, this might have an impact in the economy. Mm. Thank you so much for your time and we have learned so much from you Thank on technology you. and also applied science. Yes. So we hope that we can have you again on our show next time. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, so you much. Dennis. Thank you very Thank much. You.